And this week, I caught up with Damien Nix, the recently appointed Chief Executive of AGL Energy. Yeah, look, the, the, there's, there's a whole range of market intervention that has come in over the last month. We, we are supportive of customer um, relief rebates. We think that is very important where the market is right now. OK, let's bust that up for starters. Yeah. So this is where the government gives rebates, gives relief itself yep. to consumers. You're supportive of that because you think that is giving direct relief to those people in need. Yeah, exactly right. And it's coming off the bill. It's not directly to all, all, all population. It's those who need it the most. We think that's really important, this inflationary environment where affordability is a challenge. Challenge. You know, and then we've talked about the safeguard mechanism. That's another part of the element there. We're supportive of that because we believe that will ultimately drive the broader economy to decarbonise such that we can all deliver on our decarbonisation initiatives. And then if I come to the caps, the caps where we're really concerned about is what does it do to longer term business confidence and investment? We, what we want to see is the investment continuing this space. OK, we, because that is about the fact that if there is a cap, there is also a cap on profitability. There is a cap on the return for the many billions of dollars that need to be invested to generate sufficient electricity to make the supply robust. Yes. Now, these are short-term caps. So what we're trying to do right now is ensure that there's sufficient supply in the marketplace. We, we need those um, discussions with those gas suppliers continuing so we bring gas into the marketplace. But what we want to do is not impact investment in the future. So short-term impact, but we, what we don't want to see is a long-term impact. OK. Do you think right now that there is investments in energy in Australia being compromised as a result of those caps and the fear that those caps might be ongoing. Look, I think what you're seeing is people are holding back. People are, you know, we're seeing that through some of our gas supply discussions. They're being held back. We're waiting for that to come back. We need that supply back in the marketplace. For us, though, we will make decisions on our investments over the long term. Our investments will be long term decisions. So we see this over, you know, 10, 15, 25 years. We'll continue to make those investment decisions. What we don't want to see is investment being pulled back across the broader marketplace. Because if if there is a lack of investment, it doesn't matter whether it's in transmission or generation, that also then compromises supply, especially when you've got significant increases in population in Australia over the next decade. Yeah, look, what we've been saying for a long time, we need to see a coordinated approach across all stakeholders, government and transmission and so forth to deliver on this transmission. It is a huge amount of spend that needs to happen. A coordinated approach is the only way we're going to get there. I think importantly though, what we have seen over the last six months is that aligned ambition. Everyone is now heading in the right direction. We just now need to coordinate that approach and get it done. But as Chief Executive of AGL, right now you need to make decisions about capital allocation to either prop up ageing coal-fired power stations or to invest in renewables. Is that a choice or is that something you've got to do yourself in a coordinated fashion? Look, we will continue to invest in our coal-fired power stations, absolutely. They're, they're here for the next 12, 12 years and it's very important we keep them reliable and affordable for the marketplace, but we'll also continue to invest in new generation and new capacity. What you're seeing us doing right now, we've got a Torrens Island battery coming on halfway through this year. We took FID on that battery only 18 months ago. We've stood it up got it operational and we're going to see that in the marketplace. That's where the future goes. We'll use our sites, we'll use our infrastructure to connect in and we can do it really, really quickly when the time is right, when we need them in the marketplace. So when the final generation comes out of Liddell this year in April, is that a test for the markets, do you believe? Um, look, I think you know, it, it's been well, well flagged for seven years now. Yes. So Liddell, we, we flagged to the market over seven years ago, it would come out. It hits 52, almost 52 years of age. It is ready to exit the market. Um, and so for us, it's about you know, that is where the market is going. And you're seeing more and more generation coming to the market every year, every day. So for us, it's that providing that signal to the market is really, really important. Is the fact that you're going to create that into a renewable energy hub, is that simply because you've got the transmission capacity there? You can get renewables into the transmission lines at a relatively cheap, affordable fashion. Yeah, look, that's exactly right. We will use those as low, in, low carbon industrial energy sites, whereby we'll put batteries in the whole form of um, different commercialisation for those sites. But battery is, is probably the, the, the best example I can give you right now. And we've got some discussions underway with Arena at the moment to put a 250 megawatt battery on that site. But as you can appreciate, the site and the capacity there is huge for us to do that. We've got the grid connection, we've got the site there, and it's ready to go. So we can do this relatively quickly um, because we've got the experience and we've got the infrastructure. Some people and some politicians will say that you don't need gas as a transition 
transitional energy source. What's your own view on that? Is it capable of using batteries and using storage to get to the final result? Or is it that you do need, A, the coal-fired power stations, and B, the gas generators? Look, we see for the time being we're going to need gas in this market, and we have gas peakers in, in our fleet. You know, they provide that firming capacity where, where it is needed. I think the future will ultimately determine about where long-duration storage goes. So long-duration storage, whether that be big-pumped hydro, long-duration batteries, that will ultimately determine where, what the role gas plays into the future, but for the short term, over the next you know, five to ten years, gas is absolutely going to be required, and potentially even out to the 35s. It really depends where long duration storage goes. We've got a, a JV underway at the moment for a pumped hydro in Musselbrook. You know, that's the sort of thing that we're all looking for to bring long duration storage. So what that means is, you know, eight hour type storage or longer. So where you know you haven't got a battery that's you know longer than a year or two, you've got something to kick in. Okay, then the final aspect of this is the returns for your shareholders. You clearly have a new major shareholder in the business who's had influence. The reality is you've halved the dividend now. There are returns on the investments you're making. When do they start to kick in? When do they start to pay off? Because right now, of course, much of the investment in the coal-fired power stations is not providing the return that they might be hoping for. Yeah, look, I would say this year has been a challenging year, and I want to acknowledge that, but what we're seeing is growth into 24. That's really important. It'll provide us both the cash flows to invest back into the future, you know, and what we've, we've disclosed today is, is where we see those returns going. We see greater returns in those firming assets. That's what the type of assets we'll put on our balance sheets because we've got the infrastructure, we've got the sites and we've got the capability to do that really quickly. So that's where the returns will come from as, as coal starts to come out. But remembering it's over a long period of time. This is 12 years so we'll continue to deliver this. That's right. You've seen it. I saw it. The federal budget this year forecasts electricity prices rising more than 50% over the next two years. What's your own feeling about that? At some stage, does household bills, does the pressure come off them? And at what stage and what does it need for the pressure to come off those bills? Yeah, look, you know, I think as wholesale prices naturally will start, there have been a historical highs over the last year or two. What we're seeing into FY24 and 25, you know, still higher than what they were in 20 and 21. So we're still seeing absolute pressure into retail bills going forward. But we do see them moderating in time. In time? In time, yes, right. One year, two years, three, well, yeah, four? That's obviously going to be dependent on some of the worldwide factors that, that, that are impacting there at the moment um, and where you know, some of this intervention goes as well. So you've seen moderation in wholesale prices absolutely over the last month or two, but you know, it's going to be where that goes into the future. And a whole range of things goes into customer pricing. It's not just wholesale price. It's where the network prices are and a whole range of factors as well. And we'll continue to look at that over the next six months before we put out our next uh, price changes. 